In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I, I just praise you and I just thank you for the, this grace awakening that you are giving us to understand that everything is grace, that our life is a grace, that the person of Jesus is all but grace. And so Lord, help us to understand this, to rejoice in, in the news, the good news of our salvation that you give us. And Lord, may we re be renewed and respond in the power of thy Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, I, I, I want to share with you today uh, grace and its con contentment and grace and its power. And then I, I, there's so much more to look at. Romans 5, the, the grace in Romans. So we could be on grace for um, uh, quite a few more uh, moments. So, uh, but first I want to share with you when the grace settles on us. And what do Catholics believe that your grace settles on you? When, when does it start? Baptism. Yeah. Baptism. Absolutely. So I, I want to show you something that's very, very exciting that, that I discovered um, about grace settling on us and beginning in us. <coughs> Grace is beginnings, and then I want to show you how to be graced and stay in the state you are and be content in the power of the Spirit. And then I want to move in there, empowerment in grace, and then I want to move from there and show you um, that uh, we're, we're not open to it and how God is changing our hearts about grace. So we got to, that, that's, that's the, the journeys that we're going to be on. But I, I would like to show you where things really get started. And so uh, we're going to be looking primarily tonight in the New Testament, though I'm sure the Old Testament will be there. And just to recommend a, a series to you called The, um, called the, uh, the Dark Night of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And you need to really look at that. When you hit, when you hit a bump in the road. When you hit a bump in the road. And uh, we've been really seeing how dark things could be. Please look at uh, the past three sessions on Psalm 71. Awesome. Psalm 71, I think it will bless you, I think it will inspire you, I think it will help you to get through. Anybody going through difficult times at times? It will explode you. Nobody, okay, very good, I'm the only one. Okay. I, if, you, if you open your Bibles to John chapter 1, I just want to show you when this grace really comes upon us, and then I want to sh share with you something I've never seen before. So this is called fresh manna. Turn to the person next to you and say, this is going to be good. John chapter 1, verse 29. You, you know, it really is important that, that I'm discovering, after 47 years of doing this, it's, dis it's really important to know the whole Bible. Because if you don't know the whole Bible and where you can pull things from, you can miss a lot of meat and potatoes. And you get very shallow Bible studies. But I think you've been discovering with me this is not shallow, this is really deep stuff. So let's look at uh, John 1, 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself did not know it, but for this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven and it remained on him. That's the part I want to emphasize with you. If you circle descend as a dove from heaven, it remained on him. Descend as a, a dove and remained on him. There's part one of this and part two. This is when grace really, excuse the expression, hits you. This is when grace comes upon you. Now it's Orthodox Catholic belief that when you're baptized you got grace. But the problem is that even though you have this grace upon you, how many know you don't know about it? That that infant really doesn't know what's going on, right? How many would like to know about grace? Now, here's what I got excited about. This is an encounter uh, that I've never seen before until you see it. This is an encounter, ready for this, between a dove and a lamb. This is an encounter between a dove and a lamb. Now, we, we can see the dove represents whom? Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Now, the first time in the Bible that 
the, the dove uh, is seen for us in, is in the book of Genesis. Do you remember that? Okay. Now that's not saying the Holy Spirit's a dove. That's not my new insight. Okay. But the reason why the dove, uh, I want to put a big star there by verse 32, descends, uh, a dove descends from heaven. Why does the, the, the dove descend from heaven? Because the door is open. The door is beginning to get open. Jesus came through the, the, the closed door, and now the Spirit is coming through. And then we're going to hear a voice from the Father. But now this is the contact when the dove comes down. So when do you receive grace? Now, you've got to understand something about the dove. And then you've got to understand something about a lamb. When you look at the lamb, the lamb is to be pure. Okay. So now the dove has to come on purity. So what is grace? It's, it's purity. If you have grace in your heart, you decide to be pure. Mm -hmm. If you're operating in grace, you don't want to be blemished. If you're operating in grace, you want the sacraments of life. One thing, too, about the Lamb is He's meek. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. The third thing about the Lamb, which got me excited, is when the Lamb comes upon you, it's, it's for the sacrifice. This can only be the grace awakening in your life when the dove comes upon the land. So if you look at verse number 32, descend as a dove from heaven and it remained on him. Now Jesus comes and he's filled with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Jesus is God. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. But this now is the encounter with the dove and the Lamb. And so, what, what God is breaking through in our lives, when the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus and gives us grace, it's absolute purity. When the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus, remains on Him, it's absolute what? Grace. Grace. What else is it? Pure. Me. Now, what does it mean to be me? I'm under control. When you have a grace awakening, you can never be out of control. Wow. Nice. You, can't, you can't lose it. How many ever thought you were going to lose it before? When Paul today is speaking in 1 Thessalonians 1.5 about being convicted, i never seen it until today. The conviction is, here's what it means, what he was saying. The conviction is upon me to you. The conviction is upon me to stay as I am, to stay with Christ, to know that I have commitment to the, all of my days. I'm not giving up no matter what the world says. No matter what they say in Houston, Texas. I'm staying with God. Now, when I have a conviction of grace inside of me, there's a miracle that happens inside of you. You know what the miracle is? You know, you know, God is going to do something to the people right away. How many would like to have that kind of grace inside of you? You know, that's what Paul meant in 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 5 today. That's the conviction. That's the power and the conviction. I always saw that, and I don't think I was wrong, that the conviction's upon the people. No. You see, you can't be saved by just the word. Paul says it's not just talk. It's power and then conviction. So when I have the Holy Spirit, when the dove gets on the lamb, and I don't think it's any accident that two, two animals are, are mentioned. What is the dove and the lamb? The dove and the lamb were both offered where? 
in the temple. In the temple, yes. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. The Chekev. They're both offered in the temple. Now what God wants to do for us in grace, He wants to get us from one tabernacle to another tabernacle. The first tabernacle is called the Mosaic Tabernacle of Moses. Now in that tabernacle, only a high priest could go in. In the Davidic tabernacle, it was open to everyone. Jesus comes to clean the temple of man's unbelief. So we need the dove to come upon the lamb. This sacrifice is the cross. This meekness is my life under control. This purity is my heart's desire. When I have that kind of grace inside of me, I'm living as a man of God should. Then when I live in the Word of God, I live in the power of God, and I live in the conviction of God. Now, I have seen in my life, uh, through, uh, through, through walking in the grace of God, I have said that God is doing something right now in this, and that's conviction, and I'll be right on target. Right on target. There's been moments I have given details and the person was set free. That was a conviction of my spirit. I would walk in, last two weeks ago, I walked into a hospital room to an 80-year-old man and I was, I was in the power of the spirit, prayed over him with his wife and the man is making a dramatic recovery. Oh, his wife said, she's almost in tears, Father Bill, you made a believer out of my son. He's a believer now. I said, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That was a conviction of the Spirit because I left the room and I said, he's all right. Wow. We, pick, we pray for a grace moment upon him. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit has to come upon the Lamb. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the Lamb, another interesting thing takes place. And then they break into how to walk in this now. What happens is that if you backtrack with me to Matthew chapter Matthew chapter um, 18. Now, I've been sharing with you many times that when you read your Bible in English or Tagalog, it doesn't it misses a lot until you understand it in the original language. Today I was reading my Hebrew Bible and. Wow. It it does it does for, for example the first the first line of Genesis three one says they'll be in the wild, the wild creatures. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that in, in Hebrew. So I'm saying we really are missing a lot. Mm -hmm. And how it's translated. Now the same thing happens in Matthew eighteen twenty, probably a very important uh, phrase, which is linked to the dove has got to be on top of the lamb. Okay, you got this? Okay. Now go down with me to verse number 20. When we read the English, the English lacks. So that's why everybody, I want to start reading in Greek tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, you're looking at me like, what? Verse 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name. It doesn't say that in Greek. The word, the word gathered when the Lamb receives the Spirit, right? When two or three are gathered, the word gathered takes on the meaning sunago. Sunago. And it means a driving force. A driving force. How many have ever seen a fellow Christian say, I gotta pray with you now? Mm -hmm. yes. That's the two or three. Wow. It's a driving force. Now, the question is, who's the driving force? The driving force is the dove upon the lamb. Wow. You've got to have the dove upon the lamb. So when I'm driven together to pray with you, because let's, let's face it, 
you prayed this morning, but my question is, was God convinced? Larry with you, I'm also with you. Was God convinced? Did we convince God? You could, we only convince God if we left this church with a Holy Spirit conviction. If not, we didn't. Now, what this is saying in Greek, for where two or three are suna aga, sun ago. Sun means together. Ago means I'm driven to it. I've got to be led by there. I've got to be led. What is leading me? It's grace. It's the grace of God compelling you. When you have true grace in God, it pushes you out. Right now, I, I've been a Catholic Christian my whole life. I believe I've received the grace of God, not in vain, as Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 6, because I've never once thought of giving up my faith. I never once doubted who I was in Christ. Not never once. I never retracted the statement, biblical statement that I made. God has allowed me to sharpen my views, and I still need to sharpen them some more, but I never backtrack because I've been driven. Now, let's go on with the Greek to see the, the dove upon the lamb. Are you getting this? Then he says there, in my name. Now, it doesn't say, in my name. It does not say that in Greek. In Greek it says, uh, let's give you the Greek. For when two or three, it does say two or three, are compelled, compelled to come together, going, the Greek word is, I can't believe how the translators miss this, going into the name. Do you see the difference between in and into? I'm into the name of Jesus. I'm into the name. There it is again, the dove upon the land. This is what happens when that baby is baptized. How many think the parents know about that? Now, the leading force of it into is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit deposits upon me the grace. Next thing it says there, there I am. Hello. Then Jesus can say, hello. Do you understand what we just said? There I am. There am I. There am I. What is he saying? I'm in the midst of you. What is he saying? You can see me. What is he saying? You can sense me. What is he saying? You can feel me. What is he saying? You can work with me. What is he saying? Greater works will you do than I did. The powering of grace is unbelievable. It has a power that, that, that remember, it goes way beyond your abilities. It gives you supernatural life. It's very interesting, Father, that you said all of this is action in the person when they're receiving the Holy Spirit. It's, it's funny because God's name is I am. Jesus is saying, am I? There's a difference. That's right. Because he's penetrated you. He is penetrated. Awesome. So what is the inter? What is the inter? What is the inter? You just said it. Oh. What is the inter? The penetration. The penetration. Absolutely. That I, when I receive grace, I won't go back. I'll live in the conviction of the Spirit. Now there's been arguments for 2,000 years. Can you lose your salvation and back and forth? And the Catholic view is you can. But when you're like this, how can you? How can you even think about it? You're walking in unbelievable power. This is what the great saints discovered. This is what the great saints did elevate. Now I want to share with you how to stay that way. Okay, everybody got the background? That's, this is just background. Now I want to share with you again some famous Bible quotes that you and I quote all the time. And you, are, you and I are, have been right on saying what they mean, but let's go really deep now. Yes? I might be confusing this, but let's, let's just explore for one minute, maybe. In the Biblical Hebrew, 
okay? God's name is I, right? Because there is no being verb in the biblical Hebrew, okay? That's what the rabbi taught us, right? Okay. So if there's no being verb, yet we're putting that being verb, am, before I, it's so obvious that it is the penetration of God's presence in you. You, you His got power it. and presence in you. You That's got what, awesome. You got what grace is about. Are you ready to walk around the church? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she got it. She got it. Uh, Georgette will call you up later uh, to understand <laughs> what you just said. Okay. Yeah. So you can say, "There am I." There am I. That's grace. That's the grace of God. Now I want to share with you how to walk in this. Okay. Hopefully you understand. And so tonight we're going to spend. Uh, this was not part of my original context. It's uh, the Lord is switching a lot of gears for me here. So I'm thinking, you know, I want to get into some mercy uh, parts of you, but I haven't been able to do that yet because this is this is so good. Okay, go with me again to a very a very uh, uh, familiar scripture. It's so familiar you could quote it to me. Go to Philippians. Okay, and, and, and let, let's go now to uh, a pericope. What does pericope mean, everybody? A partial. What does a partial mean? A, 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 a passage. Okay, well, let's look at the passage in the Bible. And you all know this very well, but now we're going to break it down. And you know what? I know one thing. You need this. You need to hear what we're going to say because I want you and me in the Holy Spirit to develop a conviction in the Spirit. Now, I give you a little prerequisite. How many would like this conviction of grace experience? If you want it, here's what you need to do. Here's a little prerequisite. You need to open your mouth. You need to tell people about God. Has everyone here at least told one person in your life about God? Yes. Okay? And when you're, when you're living in this kind of grace moment, you will open your mouth and you will declare who Christ is to people. And you will enter into the very mind and the heart of Christ. Would you like that? Yes. I want you really to experience this. So if you go with me to Philippians chapter um, 4, and again, these are very, very familiar scriptures. We're going to look at verse 10. And we're going to go all the way down now to verse uh, 20. Okay, so that, that's, that's our study tonight. I, I just gave you a lot of prerequisite. And I want, you, I want you to think with me. I want you to think that the, the dove is upon the what? The lamb. Does that help you? Is, is that giving yes. you an image? Yes. Okay, now, Paul's going to speak about how to really be content. Now, your, your, your job in life is not to speak. Seek to be happy, no matter what the Constitution says. I love the Constitution, I taught the Constitution, but I, I was just down in the Dominican Republic and the translator was translating for Carol saying, uh, uh, she kept saying joy and he kept saying happiness. I said, no, 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 no. I was sitting in the front row and said, no, it's not alegria, it's gozo, 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 gozo. Tell the people from the Dominican Republic, gozo, gozo, gozo. So finally, at the 20th time, he said, oh, gozo. I said, yes, it's gozo. So I was listening to his translator. So he says here, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. N not that I complain of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Okay, that's grace. That's grace. Now, I want to give you now, I want to give you uh, uh, four major points. Let's say four. Yes, I want to give you four, five major points on how to stay in this type of grace and really grow in the power of the Spirit, okay? okay. Now, verse 10 and verse 11. Here's what Paul is saying. I rejoice, okay? When you have grace, you're always rejoicing. Because as, as Abraham saw in Genesis 18, what does he say? I can't contain this. <laughs> and something interesting about Abraham which thrilled me. Abraham takes, God takes Abraham outside to look at the stars during the daytime. What's wrong with that picture? You don't see the stars. You don't see the stars. It was during the, you know why we know it's during the daytime? Why? 
Because what did he think? I'm too old to have a child. So look up and you can't see the stars. So when you look up and you don't see the stars, then God says, wait till the stars come. Now look up. Grace brings you from seeing what you can't see to seeing what God will show you to see. Wow, that's huge. Yes, you got it. Wow. So now, that's contentment. Now, here's number one, contentment. Contentment brings you the confidence that God's in control. Verse 10, God is in control. Now, th this is so good, this is going to be right where you live. And everything he says there, verse 10, is going to happen for the good. Sound familiar? Yes. You, you, had, you, you were concerned for me. You, had, you have a reviving concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. So, God put a little note there, verse 10, put a big note there, a little big note, is God hasn't forgotten me. Grace reminds you you're not forgotten. Grace never gives up. Grace is God's power packed going through you. Now, the second thing I want to share is which really gets us excited, is not that I complain of what. When you have grace, you don't complain anymore. Because you realize all your desires and everything you wanted have been met in grace. That's why it's a grace awakening. When you have grace, here's what happens to you. Listen to what he says there. I don't complain, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now here's what that means. When you have the grace of God inside of you, what's happening supernaturally in us is I, I, ha, I am satisfied with little. I don't go around saying, I want more. I'm satisfied with what I got. When we say the Our Father, God will supply for us, as Jesus says in Luke 12, Food, the shelter, and the clothing. How many know that's all supplied in your following him? Now, you and I got to grow in grace. So how many here can say, when you have this grace awakening, I'm content with little. In fact, you should be discovering when you're walking in grace, you want nothing else. You should be discovering by now, nothing else satisfies me. Two weekends ago, I lived in a mansion. I'd rather live in your house. How many know that's scary? I didn't desire that. I didn't desire that. I didn't desire the luxury that I had. I had a bedroom. It was an entire house. How would you like to have a bedroom that's a house? And the house was pretty sizable. I went, I'm, I'm really scared living in a house that's a bedroom. That's it. That's it. And I knew a few miles away from me there were people that didn't have this. And my hostess took, took her money and built two Catholic schools. So I'm not, I'm content with little because I have God. So how many here could say, I, I don't, and then I don't have to complain anymore. Because when you have grace, Something's built in you. I have all that I need. How many have arrived right there that you have all that you need? We're not looking for the... Don't get... Don't get don't, please don't misunderstand me. I hope you all have good things. I hope you have all good cars. You need it. And good houses. You need it. I, I, I wish all goes, but I realize I have all I need. When you have that, you've arrived at grace being the center of your life. Wow. Father, so I was thinking about the scripture that you gave foundationally, meaning 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, yeah, chapter 1, verse 5. Um, it really helps lay the foundation of what you're building now as far as the Philippians. 
And I'm digressing here, and in the sense of looking at that scripture again, as is for our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction, you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For you received the word in much affliction and with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And as I look at these scriptures, you're seeing how his grace is the manifestation of his grace. How is it, how is it being emanated in that person's life? It says even here, like you said, they were men full of what? Uh, the Holy Spirit of word and power and holds it full of conviction. The kind of men we prove to be among you. So it's important for us as we walk in God in, and as imitators of God and as we do the things of God and learn through our affliction, he will manifest that conviction of his grace. That you, manifestation. You've got it. Okay, but again, it, as we look at that scripture, we see what kind of men they were. They were men. We're learning to be imitators of these godly men. That conviction of his grace. You know, you that it. conviction of, of seeing that manifestation. So the manifestation of grace can be imparted in us as we learn through our afflictions to give them to God. And as we give them to God and trust God, we'll see his grace being poured forth. You got it. Now, building on what you just said, when you have that grace, people will know yes. we're not like other people. People will know we're living supernaturally. Do you know why you're not bringing a lot of people to Christ? You're not living supernaturally the way you should. Oh, you go to church, they do see a difference, but not enough of a conviction of their lives. So when I have this grace awakening, I'm content. So Paul says, number two, Paul says there, to be, to be satisfied with little. How many are satisfied with little? Let me ask you a question. Is there any other dreams you have of something you need to get? No. Then Paul says there, I know, verse 12, how to be abased. Mm -hmm. I know how to abound. I've been on all the levels. <laughs> After last weekend, I've been on all the levels. And I'm, I'm glad God showed me that. I'm glad I had the experience. I know I don't belong there. I know I don't want to stay there. But I know I just want grace. <clears throat> Now, when you have grace, God will bring you to one heart's desire to live for Him and to bring somebody else. Are you there yet? Have you arrived at that point? The third thing, the third thing is this. This is so phenomenal, what Paul is saying. When you have this kind of grace inside of you, you always live higher than your circumstances. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Where are you? Now, a lot of, if I have a typical day or you have a typical day, you and I are overwhelmed with life, aren't we? Yes. So, here's your circumstances. Where are you? Here or here? Grace is way beyond. Grace puts me here. This is grace and I'm above my circumstances. So when I'm living in the power of the Lord, guess what? I'm above my circumstances. So if a problem comes <clears throat> right near me, as St. Louis de Montfort said, Ah, oh, Lord, another little problem. <laughs> How many say that, another little problem? Or, be honest, you're in church. Oh, no. <laughs> Where are you? Are you another little problem? <laughs> oh, this is easy for us, Lord. <laughs> or are you oh, oh how much more am I going to take that's not living a life of grace circumstances are crushing crush remember Paul said last week to be crushed and not perplexed remember amen life can flatten you out but guess what you know why life couldn't flatten Jesus out he rose from the dead and you know why life couldn't flatten Jesus out? Hebrews 12, because he had joy in his heart. So the third thing I want to share with you is this. What Paul saying in verse 11 and 12. It comes to the point now that we've got to live independent from our circumstances. Independent from them. 
let's, let's be honest. All the time you wasted is all about your problems. Right? And you know what? How many of we all invite problems? How many of you are setting yourself up for more problems? Like when a, when a penitent leaves confession, guess what? If he doesn't change his life style, she doesn't change her life, he's going to have the same sins. And guess what? If you don't change your lifestyle, you're going to have the same problems. They're coming back. So you and I are going to decide that here's my circumstances. Here, this is where most of us are, maybe still are right here. Or am I going up here? Then Paul says this to us. He says the secret is this. You, you and I are going to learn to be satisfied. You and I gotta be, we gotta have this deeper relationship with God. It's never, never, never depends on what I have or what I don't have. It's all grace. Are you getting this? So where are you in your life, saints? It's my moment to be wonderfully embraced by God. So you put a little note there. I know how to be abased. And I know how to abandon. Did he complain? Never once. And in any and all circumstances. Did you hear that? What does all in Greek mean? All. I've been up. And I've been down. And I'm so glad I've been on both sides. Because I'm content. How many can live like that? How many can live that kind of grace awakening? Then Paul goes on to say, which is very famous, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and want. Isn't it great that we all have good full meals, but how many know in less than 24 hours your stomach will be growling again? After we just had that, well, I can't eat anymore. But guess what? Tomorrow you will. It'll start all over again. It'll start all over again. But here's now, here's how to do it. This is so incredible what I want to share. The fourth thing I want to share with this, verse 13. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Alright, let's break that down. Going into the Greek and everything else. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. What's the strengthening? It's called divine power. Amen? What's the strength here? It's called grace. Now here's what he's saying. Here's how to do it. How do I want to be content in grace for the rest of your life? You've got to say something to God right now. He's right here. Here's what you've got to do. It's so unbelievable. If you want grace. God, I'm at the end of my resources. I'm at the end of all my resources. Can I tell you what everybody in this room has probably experienced, the majority, if not all of us? Everybody in this room right now, for the most part, maybe there's a blessed brother or sister, your resources are going down. And we don't want to panic one another. Most people in this room, just be aware, everybody, you could just, when, when you see them coming in, their resources are going down. Humanly speaking, what's God's going to say to us as believers? I'm giving a grace awakening to you. Now, for me to get the grace, to get the dove above the lamb, I need to say I'm at the end of my resources. You can't follow Jesus if you're hanging on to John as, as, as John chapter 1 says. You've got to leave. Leave what you knew. So now, <clears throat> when I'm at the end of my resources, here's what I'm saying. Philippians 4.13. That's what the Greek is saying. Come to the end of your resources. It says this, that I am not the power to sustain me. 
I must come to the point where I know grace is supplied for me. It means this. I will be able to go. It means this. I, I, I can do all things. You know what that means in Greek? Strong to go through. I am strong to go through everything. So when the circumstances come on, to the right and to the left, they'll divide. I'll walk through. The worst obstacle for Jesus and the power was the cross, but yet that's our greatest strength. Here's what it means. I will no longer trust human resources. Here's what it means. Then I will be strong. Here's what it means. Isaiah 40, 31. I will faint not anymore. I will not grow weary anymore. It means that I will have a mountain top and I will climb to the mountain. I told you last week, Satan right now is on a direct journey down. He started in glory. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 and 10, he fell to earth. And when, how many know the reason why you and I are having all of our difficulties, the reason why you and I continue to battle is because we have an army arrayed against us. And where are they fighting right now at this moment? They're fighting in the second heaven called the heavenlies. All the fighting is going on. Now let me share with you something very interesting. Every time in the Bible St. Michael is mentioned, it always deals with Israel. Always deals with Israel. Revelation 12, Israel. Daniel 10, Israel. Daniel 12, Israel. So right now, what you and I got to wake up to, and no more yawning. When you wake up and, just, and know why life is hurting you, it's because there's so many spirits aligned against you. Okay? When Satan got over the earth here, he took with him all of these other spirits. How many know they're all here? Now his journey is down, down, down. Our journey is up, up, up. Now when we have grace in our lives, guess what? These spirits are aligned, are aligned against me. All the spirits that are going down to their, 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 to their eternal demise, they're here and bothering us. Remember Jesus encountered 2,000 of them. Remember? And remember they went into... The, the ham, they got, that's how you got devil ham, all the little piggies went shooting right into those, those little porkers and they went all into the drink. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And so who's bothering us? Why can't we have this grace awakening? Because these spirits don't want us to get into the power of the grace of God. Are you getting this? Why are you having bad days? Why are your circumstances crushing you? Why can't you say, I can do all things in Christ? Why can't you be stronger? Why can't you, hearing all this good stuff, say, yeah, but you're going to leave and you're still going to look like this and do what you do? Why can't you come and build spiritual muscle? Why can't you become renewed in the spirit? Why can't you become renewed in your mind? Because of the attack on you. Because you don't know how to defend yourself. You don't know how to go up, 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 up. You, 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 because you, you're saying, I need this, I need that. you got to say this to God. I am at the end of my human resources. Put in your mind. Put in your heart. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. I am going to mount up as on eagle's wings. You know why I'm going to mount up? Because the dove is upon the lamb. And I can be pure. I can, I can be a man that's my, my body's under control. I can be a man where I, I know that my life is sacrificial. And when you know that you're living in grace, it's a sacrificial word. Before, the other thing Why? is this. What I see, what you're saying is, we need to make, uh, we need to ask God by making a conscious decision to allow the door of our hearts to be open so His grace can be imparted in our life daily. So just as just as you were saying how Paul was saying, I learned to be it's having that conscious decision that every time that everything is being taken away from me, and we see things around us that things are being taken and we have to learn to trust God, it's saying, God, I it's I'm making this decision today that I'm allowing my door 
of my heart to be open so God's grace can be imparted. I'm going to trust you through the circumstances. By doing that, it's a progression of learning to be content in all things, but it's a decision constantly. Now you know. Can I just say something? Now you know whether grace is really exploding in you or not. I believe that the grace is there. It's whether really or not we're using right. it. Right. That's what I just said. How many of us going to be tested when you go exactly. home to those interesting exactly. people you live with? <laughs> and you'll be back to the way you were. You'll be back to. Okay, now, without this, without knowing how to abase and to abound, I will never, never depend on God. I will never depend on God if I don't have this struggle. If I didn't know that I was weak and come to the end of my human resources, now watch this. Iron sharpens iron. Sharp iron. Here, here is the explosive part right now. I'm at the end of my resources. Like I said, I think everybody can, yeah, we should take a survey. Everybody, everybody sees things going down in your life? Everybody probably. Yes. Anybody worried? Okay? Everything's going down. Everything's going down. This year to now, I woke up right now and people have me without me even leaving my room owing $20,000. Without me even leaving my room. And a lot of it is a lot of bunk. And so I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. So, please write out a $20,000 check and I'll be all right. <laughs> now, watch this. When I get to this point, put a start by 11, 12, 13. When I get to this point, only at this point can God manifest His life through you to the world. Only at this point can the world see grace coming through you. You know why, again, we don't have converts to the faith? Because we, we try to play it over that I'm okay. And that God manifests himself through this. What did we read in Titus a couple weeks ago? What do we read in Titus? We read in Titus that this is called the epiphania. God wants to manifest. Contentment, listen, contentment is the byproduct of your stress. Contentment, to him, to him who has no might, God will increase the strength. No matter which way to turn, God is to be involved. Now, to be strong, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Let's look at that word strengthens. Yes, sir. Uh, Tiffany, uh, Joe went through that epiphany. Yes. Mm -hmm. At the end of the struggle, after he repented, he says a little phrase, and it's very easy to just read over that. He says, I knew God, but now I see it. Difference. And God says to us in Genesis 22, I see you, but now I experience you, Abraham. Big difference. Yes. Big difference. Yes. That's why it's, it takes us a long time to wake up with a grace awakening. Okay? Now, let, let's look at these verbs in Greek. Okay? I can do all things. Now, let's break it down. I, that's me, can do. Uh, Circle can do power. Now, all things, all things right there means, all things, listen, put, put a big note there, all things, in the Greek, means the material world. There's nothing in this material world can hold me. Are you all Christians? Yes? yes. Do you all have the Holy Spirit? Yes. There's nothing in this world that could hold you. But how many know we have allowed it to hold us? We have allowed it to put us in check. I can do all things. So what is Paul saying is, this material world is not going to knock me out. That's that conviction of the Spirit. When I have the conviction of grace inside me, I told you what it means from 1 Thessalonians 5. People will know that I'm different because I will be convicted in the Spirit to tell you what's going to be going on right now in the midst of this assembly of believers. And I'll tell you right now, convicting in the Spirit, some of you are getting this. I can do all things, right underline there, all things is the, the total 
the total understanding of this world. I can do all things in Him, in Jesus. I can go without whatever the world offers. Do you understand what he's saying? I don't have to accept what the world offers. You need a new cheeseburger. You need a new car. Because there's a beautiful blonde sitting on the top of the hood. Does she come with it? What I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Here's what Paul's saying. I, powered by grace, can allow the material world not to affect me and I don't need what it offers. This is not magic. This is not, oh, I follow Jesus and I'll get all these little miracles. No. No, 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 no. But it means, you know what the miracle of your life is? I don't need this world to live for Jesus Christ. No human resource can give me joy. Father, it says here in First Timothy, it says here in First Timothy, chapter 6, verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Amen. Are you getting it? How many are getting what grace is about inside of you? How many of you, we just have Christmas Day right now? Now, what is all things? I can do all things. It means I get absolute power. Grace is empowering. Now, here's what happens. When you have this kind of grace in the Spirit, you have, you have more than you think you do. Grace is way above just eking it out. Jesus multiplies the fish, which was a sign of his messiahship. Okay? Here's what it means. I'll give you the Greek. This the, the, the strength. Is this good stuff? Are you getting this? Yes. When you're strengthened, right there, I can do all things in him who strengthens. Here's the Greek. You can, you, you can, you can see some words. It's endunameo. What do you see in there? Endunameo. Dynamite. Dynamite. Power. Yes. And dunameo. Okay, you see, you see that word dynamite? Now, here's what that means. When you're walking in the Spirit, it means that I am absolutely infused with strength. Mm -hmm. There it is again, the what? The dove on the lamb. Wow. You see my background? You are infused. You are, God breathes upon you. Remember Jesus breathed upon us in John 20. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean I can do all things? We're breaking up line by line in Him, Jesus, who strengthens me. In dunameo. Only in Him. So here is, it's going deep inside of you. And here's what it means. It means that I have power activated. When, 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 my strength is gone. Mm, wow. Mm. My grace is sufficient. Yes, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. And for God you. gets the glory, not us. You got it. That's the whole idea. It's always pointing up to the Father. You got it. Let me give you uh, an example. Say I have a generator outside and all the lights go out around the neighborhood, but mine stay on. What happened? <laughs> what happened? The generator kicked in. What's going to happen to this world as Jesus is getting ready to come? A lot of people's lights are going out, and a lot of them who went to church today, they're going to go, they're going out. You know why? Because they left here, they went to Dunkin' Donuts and knocked three people out of the parking lot. <laughs> and their lives are not changed right now. But I who meditate on the Word, I who come in and understand what Jesus means in the Eucharist, I, I have these the desire for Him, and I, I live in this power of the Spirit of God. So what happens is, because I'm at the end of my human resources, and I've been in church long enough for all my whole life watching people when they're really upset, put their head down in prayer and asking God, help, 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 help. Have you been there yet? Help, 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 help. Can I help you out? Help! Okay, there. So how many want the power of God to kick in? You've got to come to the end of your resources. I can't do it anymore. Boom! He kicks in. He says, finally, you said it. Boom! There's, there's, 
there's there's a uh, second Corinthians 12 which we just we, we, we've been we've been talking about a lot now how many would like to come to the end of your resources this is this is incredible when you can do all things the Indu no meo, when you can do this this is the time when you're living in grace that you do God's will Jesus made some outstanding statements in John 15 and he says that whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will grant you. I haven't met one Christian in my whole life who ever said that worked for them all the time. Every one of us, how many of we'd all be gazillionaires in the spirit if we all knew how to, anything I ask for, I get. How many of you, you, you would do, anybody live that verse perfectly? Here's what that means now. It means when I'm in grace, I know what the will of God is. When I do the will of God, I'm a rich man. When I do the will of God, it means this. I have right living. See the purity again? See the meekness I'm under control? See the sacrificial life that I'll be living? When I do that, brothers and sisters, I will never, never, never care what people are thinking about me because I'll think what God is trying to say to me because my time is Christ. I am madly in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't stop thinking about Jesus. I go on vacation, I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm sitting in the movies, I'm thinking about Jesus. I'm on Broadway and they're kicking their shoes off. I'm thinking about Jesus. It, it, you mean the end. When you say the end of resources, when you say the end of resources, is that things or stinking thinking? I think it's stinking thinking. All of that. It's when you and I don't become dependent that I need this. So it doesn't Remember, when you're under your circumstances, you're saying, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. How many of you have had circumstances over here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over here is, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. Christ will do. Christ is doing it through me. When you're at the end of your human resources, you're doing God's will. You know it. You believe it. So I went into that hospital room and I prayed. The wife got all excited today. She says, he's making an unbelievable recovery. Mm -hmm. Another lady comes up to me and she says, you prayed of a person with cancer. It's disappearing. Mm -hmm. And all I said is, they'll be fine. So should I tell people with stage 4 cancer they'll be fine? Wow. We, just had a, we just had a woman, a, a teacher in our school and she dragged her husband into me. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I could drag in people in my room. And he had stage 4 cancer. And he went to Sloan. There's not a drop of cancer in his Amen. body. Amen. So I come under the conviction of the Spirit. The power of God is upon you. And if you see people coming into the kingdom of God. So... If I'm at the end of my human resources, I move in the Spirit with God. I cannot get this. Listen, if the dove is upon the lamb, I love that image, the dove upon the lamb. And I'm, I'm thinking of animals when I say that. It makes it better for me. But when the dove is upon the lamb, guess what, brothers and sisters? You've got to get this. I cannot live a sinful life. Because remember what the lamb is? Purity, mm -hmm. meekness, yes. Mm -hmm. sacrificial Self control. Whoa. What is required for me to be at the end of my human resources? I say here with joy, I'll obey. I've learned that the secret, you can underline that there, that's the secret that Paul was saying all this time. I've learned the secret. How many know you've just been told the secret? My whole life I looked at that and asked, what's the secret? That's the secret. That's the secret. How many think you understood what the secret is now? Amen? Then, then the fifth point is, he says there, if I really have, if I really have this down, and I think this is a very important point with all the rest, if I have grace awakening, there's an unbelievable new concern, and it's never for me, it's only for you. brothers. It's all for you. Here's what he says. Yet as a kind of you to share my trouble. Nobody knows. And you Philippians, you know yourself that in the beginning of the gospel, 
What does it mean if you underline there the beginning of the gospel? The beginning of the gospel is when you first heard it. The beginning of the gospel is when you first heard it. In the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership. Certainly the word partnership there is koinonia. No one entered into koinonia with me in giving and receiving except you only. For even in Thessalonica you sent help once and again. Not that I seek the, seek the gift, but I seek the fruit which increases to your credit. Do you see what he's saying? I don't seek anything. <coughs> Matthew 6, 33, I, I have the kingdom. You know, if this, I, I seek, there's the meek again, the dove upon the lamb. I seek, now, when I become centered on others, guess what will happen? You'll never be depressed. I got to admit that through my struggles, there's moments I just want to be left alone. I got to admit that there's moments uh, some, the secretary say, Father Bill, this one wants to talk to you, this one wants to talk to you, this one wants to talk to you, they got trouble, they got trouble, they got, I said, I got trouble. <laughs> and I'm trying to work my head out before I listen to what's in your head. I'm better now. I'm better now. But I was going through my, my, uh, my I was getting static. Why, why was I getting static? Because of what the enemy around me. I told you, Satan's down here, he's going down into the pit, and from the pit, and, and of Revelation 20, he'll be released into the lake of fire. You, you see, he's downward, and where are we going? Upward. And so guess what happens? We're going upward, he's trying to push us downward. We're going upward, he's trying to push us downward. How many felt like that? How many, how many felt three steps forward and five backwards? Why, why am I worse? And here it is in our life, we're, we're, we're losing resources. It's like, what's happening to me? Where am I going? What am I doing? So the fifth point is this. It's concern for others. When I'm living in grace, I want to share this with everybody. Remember, remember in Ephesians 3.20, when you pray, you get more back than you ever have imagined. How many are experiencing that? I don't mean a lot of people that are experiencing that. What was the fifth point? The fifth point is concern for the well-being of others. And then it goes on to say there, not that I seek the gift, I know like verse number uh, um, 17, but I seek the fruit which increases to your credit. Now what's the fruit? The fruit is that you took care of me. Mm -hmm. The fruit is, I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And by you taking care of me, I'm going to bear fruit. The man that I'm with, uh, I, I bore fruit because I helped him out years ago. Years ago. Like 30 years ago. He says, let me help you out, man. Jesus says to us that you've got to make sure that you, 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 know, you know how to deal with mammon. Everybody know what mammon is? When you deal with your mammon, there are people who will remember. And so I, I had no idea that 30 years would pass and I'd be in this uh, wonderful church I'm in and great people of God and great things are happening in my life. We're remembering the fruit of the gift. And to this day, he says, I remember the fruit of the gift. That what has been given to me. Then, then he says there, now, now build on it with me. I have received full payment. Whoa. How many here can say, I've received full payment? How many have ever given money away? How many know if you give money away, it's not coming back? I've given money away, I'm still waiting. They said it's a good way to get people out of their life. That's what, the, the, they're gone. Still waiting. Do I forgive him? Nothing to forgive him. That's, it's God's money. I'm glad I still have a few. When you do this, grace forbids you to worry about you. Remember, grace brings you way above where you are with you. You can't worry about yourself anymore. I'm having the time of my life. Are you getting this? Now it means this, I will never be the issue. It means I will be, I will be, I will allow myself to be a blessing to others. I am filled, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering. Underline that. What did we just read about, what did we just read about the, uh, the dove upon the lamb? What did we just read? A fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. Where do, where do we have that before? Romans chapter 12. Right. 
Now, you, you got to understand, the Jews had what is called a daily offering. And that was called a tamid. A daily offering. You see, each day we got to offer ourselves daily on the altar of God. This is my life. In Christ. But it's really not my life, it's his life, it's the grace life. And then he says there, which everybody quotes a million times, so how many here want to have this kind of sacrificial offering? Listen, this is so important. What is verse 17 saying? Down to 19. Oh, this is so incredible. I can't even believe I'm saying it. I will give the benediction of God. I will be the benediction. So when I'm blessed by God, God will use my life to be a benediction to the world. That's grace. That's, you're the first fruit. You're the first fruit? Mm -hmm. That's it. That's benediction. Wow. I'm a benediction. How many have ever said, you're a blessing for me? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I'm a benediction. Mm -hmm. Then Nay says, my life is a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And then verse 19, everybody quotes it, and my God will supply every needs of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It's not the prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. What that means is my life will be a blessing. You will receive what you need because of grace, because of what's offered to you. When you're at the end of everything, God will, God will be there. I don't like sometimes with you, I don't like his timetable, sometimes he's too late for me, but he's always on time. Mm -hmm. I want him quicker, but he comes at that particular time. And according to his riches in glory, and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says he's very rich. Psalm 50 says he has all the cows on all the hills. I'm getting through, I'm getting through. So excited is Paul that he ends in a doxology. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he ends in a doxology. Good stuff? Amen. Awesome. Amen. Wow. Thank you. A little diversion back to these back to these heads. And usually I think it's more worthy of it is to learn. I'm learning. It's in the progressive sense in Greek. I am learning. Have, have I fully learned this right now? No, I haven't fully learned it. Good stuff? Now we're going to, um, time's up? Well, he said 10 minutes, you probably have two minutes. Uh, I, I just want to start because there's so much information to share with you. Grace empowers us. It gives us, remember, let me give you a definition again. Two or three quick things and then we're done. Grace empowers me to go way beyond my natural abilities. Number two, when I live in grace, it's marked by my overcoming any helplessness. Sorry, Father, when I live in grace, it's marked by my overcoming? No. Grace is marked by, uh, by my overcomings. I will overcome all my helplessness. If you go with me to Acts 11.20, Acts 11.20, I'm just wrapping up a few thoughts, because I, I really want to break down um, uh, when we get into Peter and divine grace, and then we're going to go to Romans and do an incredible thing on grace. Acts 27. Okay, go with me to Acts 11.23. Who wrote Acts? Yeah. Acts, let's say Luke, that's very good. Acts 11.23. This is what grace does. It enters into personal experience. Acts 11, 23. When he came and saw the grace of God. Wait, 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 wait. He saw grace? Wait, 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 wait. Has anybody seen grace? Yeah. Hmm. So put a big underline there. He saw grace. What does that mean he saw grace? His next door neighbor, grace? No. No. It means when he experienced it. Right. Mm. 
Our church is not going to be changed until people start experiencing grace. The people in this church are dead. And you try to tell them and get more of it. When he saw the grace, I love that expression, don't you? The grace of God, he was glad. What does that mean? I don't like this translation. Whoa! <coughs> Whoa! You got the translation? Yes. And he exhorted them all to remain forth. What will happen when I see grace of God? Come on! Let's go! Come on! Don't get down! Come on! Life is worth living! Come on! Don't look like this! Come on! How many, how many exhorters have you seen like that? No. <laughs> Lord be with you and also with you. <laughs> Do you hear what I hear? Yes. And he exhorted them all to remain faithful. Stay with the Lord in steadfast purpose. For he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. So, what does grace do? It affects. It affects. We're going to show you next week an unbelievable teaching about grace. How to be relentless. How to stay in there. 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 Amen. Anybody want to hear that? I can't wait to hear it. And you're going to have a new rule of your life. We're going to stay in there. We're going to stay in there. So this is the relentless power of grace. When I am weak, He's going to make me strong. And then, if you go with me to 2 Corinthians 8, 2 Cor 8. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. I, I'll, I'll be done. But just, th this is so exciting. Aren't you excited? You don't look too excited. This is exciting. <laughs> we want you to know, brethren, verse? verse 1. We want you to know, brethren, about the grace of God which has been shown in the churches of Macedonia. How come the churches came alive? They saw grace. Under, underline grace there. For in a severe test of affliction, how many are going through difficult times? Their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of liberality on their part. What did they do? They kept giving, 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 giving. Things are really bad. They kept giving, giving, giving. They had no money. They kept giving, giving, giving. When did we build the cathedral in Newark? 1937, when we were in the Depression. Did you know we built the cathedral in Newark during the Depression? Wow. They kept giving, 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 giving. They didn't stop. For they gave according, verse 3, to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own free will. They kept giving, 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 giving. They said yes to God. They said, I will give. Remember, what does grace do? Grace brings you beyond your ability. Grace brings you beyond your checkbook. Grace is an explosion in your life. When you have that grace awakening, that's you. Stay tuned next week. Did you get that? Are you alive? Are you breathing? Yes. Are you going to walk around the church today? Yes. That's grace. Is that good? Amen. I'm excited. Are you excited? You look too excited. Yes. All right, we're gonna we're gonna be. Uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I just thank you for grace awakening. With the grace that you give each of us, we've got to be encouragers and bring people along to stay to the purpose, stay to the, to the call of their lives, stay to who Jesus Christ is for them. To stay in there, Lord, stay in there, stay in there because you're coming and you're coming for people who are going to lift their heads high to receive you worthily. Oh, Jesus, 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 give us a new grace awakening in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.